Guys, what we have here is a failed VFD. Uh, the label, of course, on this drive says York, but as we all know, this is an ABB VFD. Uh, this is basically the 550. Uh, I think some of the specifics on it is the AYK designation, but if, uh, for those of you guys who are familiar with it. Now, this panel is one of the older panels. It is basically only electrically bypassed. It does not have the E-bypass or the Eclipse bypass. Everything is just contactors and stuff like that that's in here. And this drive has failed. Now, what we will be doing in this video is replacing this old ABB 550 with one of the new ABB 580s. And that's what we have here. Basically what I'm going to be doing beginning with is just going through the labeling of all of my wires and things like that. I want to make sure that I have all of the, those correct prior to removing this drive. This is on an air handler. As you can see now, we are currently running it in bypass and I've got to minimize the downtime of this equipment as much as possible. So basically what I'm going to do today, as I mentioned earlier, is just get everything labeled. I do have a drawing that I got from ABB and unfortunately the original uh, schematics I do not have for this panel. However, the guys just happen to have a drawing laying around that should be close to what this is. So I'm just going to verify uh, as much as possible what the wiring details are on this and that way we can get ready to replace this drive. Guys, I have got some notes made uh, on everything. I basically, along with these numbers uh, that are on the drawing, I did go ahead and label these as far as what they are currently on the drive. That way I can reference back to something. Now, one thing they did on this drive, I'm not a big fan of. I see it every now and then, but I'm not a big fan of it. This speed reference here coming from the controller is being split right here at this drive and going on down to the return fan. Uh, I know that that gets done uh, and occasionally. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I typically like to have separate outputs from a controller to each of the fans, but it is what it is. Uh, but we've got everything labeled. There are a couple of wires that, even though they are on this panel, uh, they are not being used as part of the system. There is a constant speed terminal input here, but it goes to nothing inside the terminal inside the main panel. So that's something that we can eliminate, things like that. But other than that, it's all pretty much straightforward. Uh, we do have the status wires here. We have the ready contacts here, or at least by default, that's how these are set up. And of course, our enables. These two wires here are gonna be the main enable. Uh, we then do have an interlock as well as that constant speed which is not used. Now the interlock, I'm actually going to be doing a little more tracing. I do not think that it's actually used on this as well, but uh, that's something that we will be determining. Uh, but so far, so good. And one thing you want to take note of on these as well, you do have jumpers here as far as current and voltage for your speed reference. You may want to take a note as far as which of those or uh, which way that is set because you will need to know that when you go to install your new drive. You can see here these are to the left which is for voltage. Uh, so I do know that this is a 0 to 10 speed reference coming into this drive. If it was over to the right it would be current on this particular drive. So when we set the new drive up that is some information that we will need to make sure that we transfer over to the new drive. Okay guys, we have all of our wiring removed. We have it labeled to where it will make our lives easier putting the new one back in. So now we are ready to loosen the two screws here on top as well as the two that are underneath here and lift this drive out of our way. The new drive actually comes with a cardboard template that will let you check for your hole alignments, your mounting alignments, and uh, that way if you have to re-drill anything, uh, much easier to use a template like this than it is to uh, try to hold the drive up there and uh, drill it and mark it. But uh, so the next step in the process is to get the new one mounted. Okay guys, we have the new drive installed. All of our wiring connections have been made. 
We are now ready to turn on power and begin setting up the parameters. You're gonna need the motor information for this next step. First of all, first thing we will do is step back, turn the disconnect on, and you can see that our drive is now lit up. Okay, and we are now ready to begin the process of starting this drive, okay? Start setup, that is gonna be the first option here. I'm gonna zoom in on the screen to where you can kinda of go along with me. Okay, our U, our uh, defaults, we are of course in the US, so we will be using that. Okay, the drive is loading language from drive. It's pulling some stuff. This is something that the ABBs always do. Here is the units as they're going to display for us. So we're going to hit next because this is what we want. Our date and time, you may want to go ahead and set this. It makes tracking faults a little bit easier. You can also set the format. Uh, the drive name, you can give this a name for whatever application you are using, and that's just something that is an option with these. Okay, the type of motor, this is where we are going to enter our motor information. So I am going to pause the video for just a minute, enter that information, and then come right back. Okay, you do have the option after you enter the motor data to spin the motor to check the direction. And you can see here, we are spinning at a slow RPM. We do have the correct direction. So I'm going to press next. And we can proceed to finish setting up the motor. It's at this point that it will ask you to make a backup of all the parameters and it's something that I highly recommend you do. Now that we've got all of the parameters set up in the drive, we are going to select done. Now at this point, we are currently in local control. What I want to do is actually switch to auto. Uh, that way we can run it off of our control system. So once I press this button here, it will switch it to remote. And I already have my air handler set to where we should be able to start it just as soon as I release an override. This will be the ultimate test here to make sure that we are controlling speed and everything else. So I go into my system, I release my override on the system just like that. And we can see that our drive is beginning to roll. I'm gonna go ahead close our doors and bring up this air handler and get this system back in operation.